Hey everybody, I, I thought I'd go ahead and come on and uh, give my testimony. Um, I hadn't really done that yet, so I thought it would be a good idea. Um, I know that before I got out of the occult, uh, it was when I heard the testimonies of other people that actually helped me. Um, there's power in the testimony. Um, testimony gives us hope. It gives other people hope. And that's a good thing, you know. We and I think that God would want us to give our testimony too. Um, anytime that somebody has a testimony, uh, whether they were healed, whether they were delivered, um, or and saved, um, that's a miracle. You know, it's something to brag about. It's something. Let's brag on God a little bit here. You know, um, I was into the paranormal. I uh, was in the paranormal for a long for gosh several years um but it didn't start there i i was always interested in the paranormal when i was a kid i loved scary movies uh anything that had to do with haunted houses or like demon possession stuff like that uh i love that kind of stuff as far as movies and everything um gosh i remember when i was a kid we would have sleepovers with other kids, other girls and stuff. And we would always end up playing games like, you know, light as a feather, stiff as a board. We would play things like Mary, Mary, um, in the bathroom and, you know, in the mirror, um, anything like that we could do. We always enjoy doing stuff like that. Um, and actually, even after my, I had my kids, um, I would do that with them too, you know, we would always watch scary movies together, um, they, when they had friends over to stay the night, we would do it with them and, you know, watch scary movies with them and we would laugh, we'd scare each other, you know, it always had this thrilling factor to it, you know, um, but anyway, I was always interested in it. Well then, um, there come a time where my grandmother, um, which had Alzheimer's, uh, they need my family needed someone to move in with her and take care of her. Well, I had a nursing background, so um, you know they asked me, and I really wanted to do it. I love my grandmother, and I, I wanted to move in with her, so we did that. We moved into her house first. It was me and my husband and my three kids. Well, then after we moved in, um, you know we started hearing noises at night. We would hear footsteps. We would hear things being moved around in the kitchen, like somebody was up. We would get up, and there'd be nobody there. Well, we the rumor was we, you know, had mentioned it to a couple family members, and they would always tell us, "Well, that's because grand Grandpa is watching over Grandma, and she he's there, you know, haunting the house." So we just kind of thought. You know, that's probably what it was, because it seemed like whatever it was, it wasn't trying to hurt us. So, one night, um, you know, we heard the noises, and it got so loud, it woke me up. And where I was laying at, we, we had our bedroom set up in the old family room. We had changed it into, like, a big master bedroom when we moved in, and the room was separated from the kitchen by sliding glass doors but we would keep the door open at night because of the air condition so we you know like I said I was laying there but I hadn't opened my eyes yet and I kept hearing the noises and I thought oh wow so I I was so scared to look though <laughs> but I just finally decided to open my eyes and look and soon as I heard another noise I opened my eyes and I looked in there and I seen the kitchen chair scoot across the floor. So as soon as that happened, I jumped up and I ran out the side door out that goes out of the old family room outside. And I was upset and I was, you know, yelling and my husband came out there and he asked me what was wrong. And I told him, you know, what I seen. And I told him, I said, I... I don't care. I'm moving out. I'm, I'm not going to stay here anymore. And he finally calmed me down. And, you know, he told me, he said, Dana, it's probably just your grandpa looking after your grandma. Because whatever it is, it's not harming us. It's not trying to hurt us. 
So I went ahead and I calmed down and I, I just took it that, okay, it's maybe it is grandpa then, you know? So what, where I was interested in the paranormal at this point of time, this made me even more curious about the afterlife. So this is when I really became curious about it because I knew that the paranormal is real. And I knew uh, that there was something there. You know, I didn't know, but I wanted to know if it was departed spirits of our dead loved ones. And I, I really truly believed that that's what it was. So I had went to church uh, since I was a little kid, as far back as I can remember. Um, I grew up in a, well, I went to a Baptist church for a while. Then I, I was basically more or less raised in Church of God, Pentecostal churches, you know, things like that. So anyway, but I had never heard no one talk about the paranormal or ghost or any of that stuff. Um, and I didn't, certainly didn't study it on my own. I did not get into my Bible and research these answers that I was wanting, uh, you know, these questions that I wanted answered. So I didn't, I didn't go to my Bible like I should have. So what I did was I got curious and I started going out and doing ghost hunts. I started going to graveyards. I went to, um, uh, you know, do, and we'd take pictures, uh, me and my kids, and we would take audio recorders. And actually, the first night we went out, actually, I got a picture of, a, it was totally like an apparition. Um, I got an EVP on the uh, recorder, and it was... Uh, I remember it was the first grave that I was standing at and I started asking questions. And when I said, what is your name? Clear as day, you could hear a voice say, Frank. So, <clears throat> it you know, this was something that was just uh, awesome to me. I thought that was really cool. And me and my, uh, one of my kids went back the next day because I remembered where we started at when we was in that graveyard that night. And we went there because I wanted to see the gravestone and I wanted to see if it really was, uh, you know, the name Frank on the gravestone. So me and my daughter, we went there the next day and we looked and sure enough, <laughs> sure enough, the name on that gravestone was Frank. So, um, <clears throat> this was only stuff. Every time we would, you know, see something paranormal or we'd get EVPs or anything like that, uh, it would just draw us in closer and closer into the paranormal. And it really just fueled my passion for the paranormal. Um, so the more things happened, the more addicted I got to going out ghost hunting and stuff like that. Well, then finally, um, I, I, my grandmother, I had her for five years. Um, actually, I ended up moving out of her house and we bought our own place and she moved in with us. And uh, we was there probably six months or less and she uh, passed away. Um God rest her soul, you know, um, I actually, I'm, it's one of the most, um, uh, how do I say this? Most gratifying job a person can have is taking care of a, a loved one like that and spending time with them, you know, um, before they do pass on. So it was a, um, an experience, um, uh, you know, just taking care of her and everything. And, um, I'm always happy that I did do, get to do that. So, anyway, after she passed on, I had more time, uh, and I got a regular job, and then on my spare time, we really got into the ghost hunts. And I went, 
And um, I was online. I got my first computer. I got online and everything, and I found another group. I, I actually, I think it was I found an ad on Craigslist, and somebody had a, a paranormal team, and they were looking for investigators. And I answered the ad, and I talked to the man um, that had the other team, and everything, you know, went really well. Um, he wanted me to start on his team. And so we set it up and we started doing ghost hunts with this other team. I ended up being the general manager of the team. Um, you know, we went to do a lot of investigations. We even went, we would go out of state and in people's homes, you know, that had paranormal activity and we would do, you know, ghost hunts and, and, uh, investigations you know like I said out of state and stuff and then we would go to commercial sites that were rumored to be haunted and we would do those um, we would go to places like Casadega spiritualist camp uh, we would go in there we had different buildings there we had permission you know we had to go to the town meeting and get permission and then we would go to places like uh, like the Titusville Playhouse um, you know, all kinds of different places, you know, um, and we would stay overnight and, and things like that, but it was a lot of fun. Okay. Now I really enjoyed doing it. Well, um, we started, I started really getting into it, it pretty heavy. Um, we had me and this other guy, we, we, I'll just, I'll just leave it at this. We had some differences so me and my daughter decided well we're, we'll just start our own team well by this time I had already started getting up my own equipment and you know things like that so I started my own team and started recruiting people and um, we ended up doing some investigations on our own I still did a few more investigations with this other gentleman and his team. Um, I mean, it wasn't like we had any kind of big uh, disagreements, nothing huge. But, you know, I just wanted to have my own team. And um, the differences that we did have was enough that I wanted to move on. Uh, you know, like I said, to have my own group. So anyway... Um, one one night we went and did an investigation with this other team and it was a man that you know had been thrown against the wall a few times and he was physically attacked by spirits so the guy he he uh the last time he was thrown uh it hurt his back so he went to the emergency room he told the doctor there what happened well, the doctor, of course, didn't believe him. So the doctor went ahead and set him up. To, he sent him over to a place called Circles of Care, which is a mental health um, facility. And he sent him there for, uh, like, uh, psychological evaluation and uh, observation. Well, he was there for a week. And while he was there he had mentioned what happened to one of the nurses and the nurse actually believed him and the nurse was also into the paranormal so this nurse uh, had a business card of another friend of ours that had another team and uh, you know she told him and, and gave him the card and he called her well she had too many cases at the time and she couldn't take his case so she called all of us so we set it all up and uh to go over there and do the investigation after he got out of the hospital the next week and before that though a few of the fan, uh, team members went over to the house and did a preliminary investigation they got a feel for what was going on. They, you know, uh, took down everybody's um, information and any other kind of information that would help us to be able to, uh, you know, with our investigation. So <clears throat> when they went over there, though, they did put out a couple audio recorders 
and, you know, tried to see if they could catch anything, you know, while they were there. Well, sure enough, they ended up getting some EVPs, and the EVPs were nasty EVPs. Uh, they were yelling, get out, get out now, all of you. And there were several EVPs on there that was, uh, you know, li like that. And then while they were there, there was a young girl that lived in the home. And when I say young, she was probably about 17. <clears throat> and she was best friends with the guy that, that uh, you know, the one that was getting thrown. And she would start talking to this spirit of a little girl, so-called. And when she did, she started manifesting as if she was channeling this spirit. And she started sobbing and acting like she was being abused by her father. And uh, she went into the closet in one of the bedrooms and she was in there and she was crying and, you know, and all this. So anyway... <clears throat> They had that information. So, you know, which was actually kind of uh, confusing because we're thinking, okay, if this is a spirit of a little girl, why would it be attacking a man? And especially with the kind of strength that we heard that, you know, it, it, it had. So we went to do the investigation the next week. And it just so happens while we were there, uh, well, there wasn't much going on that night. There was like, we had a few things happen, uh, nothing major, but the guy finally asked us, he says, do you want me to go into the house with you when you do one of your sessions? And I can, uh, he said, whatever it is, it doesn't like me. So maybe it'll do something, you know, cause you know, this guy, you got to realize he was in a position where no one believed him. And he was actually being physically attacked, and it was very frustrating to him, um, you know, as like the, the week before that when he went to the hospital and he was hurt, the doctor put him in a mental invest, uh, uh, hospital. So, you know, he was frustrated, you know. So, anyway, so we went ahead and let him come in there with us. I mean, after all, he pretty much lived there. Um, so he went in there with us, me and my daughter... And, and uh, the the gentleman that, you know, was being attacked, he, he went in there with us. And then I had another team member that was there. And us four went into the room, and we had our monitoring station out on the front porch. And the other investigators and the other family members were out there watching on the monitor, uh, you know, what was going on while we were doing the... Um, uh, the dowsing rod session. So I was, we was, me and my daughter was sitting on the bed and we were, I was recording with my handheld, um, camcorder and that my friend was asking questions and using the dowsing rods. And he was asking the, uh, spirit questions by saying, you know, are you afraid of Dawn? I bet you are. And then he would say, why don't you come out and I can do, you know, kick your, you know, blah, blah, blah. He was trying to provoke this spirit to do something. And finally, the young man, he said, you're scared, you're scared. You know, he was also trying to provoke it. Well, about that time, my friend asked again, he says, so you are afraid of Don, aren't you? And about that time, the, the dowsing rods opened up as they were answering no, opened up. And all of a sudden, literally out of nowhere, this guy was thrown against the wall so hard, it sounded like something outside hit the house, like a car. I mean, it was loud. Um, we hurried up and turned the light on, and we seen him, uh, instead of facing us like he was, he was literally turned around, laid on the ground, up against the wall, and it was catty-cornered with a file cabinet. The file cabinet had a big den in it where his head hit the, the file cabinet, and he was he appeared to be knocked out. And we were talking to him, and, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? And um, finally he come around, and he just started crying. 
and by this time we were yelling and asking everybody to come in because we you know we thought he was hurt bad so they came in everybody else will come to find out the reason it took them a few minutes to come in the grandmother which was sitting on the front porch watching the monitor when he was thrown she was thrown off the front porch at the same time so you know we had all this happen and to make a long story short after all this happened i had the footage on my camcorder so i would go to um paranormal conventions and stuff and i would show the footage because it was it was it was uh you know quite some evidence there you know and the guy um they ended up moving the the family did so i lost contact with them and um i you know like i said i would go to the conventions and stuff and i would show footage but at this time it wasn't i never was drove away from the paranormal it this only fueled my you know uh passion for it even more um I wasn't really, I mean, I was afraid because it was like I knew then what it could do, but I was still blind <laughs> to what was really going on and what these spirits were. But since this spirit kept saying that it was a spirit of a little girl, it really just something was telling me that these spirits were always lying and that it was actually demons. And I had my brother tell me a few times, you know, he said, Dana, he said, these spirits that you're talking to are not ghosts. They are truly demons. He said, the Bible says that when we're, when we die, we're no longer here. You know, we're, we either go to heaven or to hell right away. Um, there's no lim limbo. Um, we're not going to be here on earth, uh, earthbound. Um, we don't get stuck here. So I, I didn't believe him. I mean, he tried to even show me Bible verses, but I didn't want to believe that. You know, I, to be honest, I didn't want it to ruin my fun. I loved doing what I was doing and I didn't want to hear it. So if anybody else would tell me anything like that too, I'd get upset, you know? Um, so anyway, finally... After a couple more years after that case, uh, my family, we started getting a lot of stuff happening in our home. Well, it was stuff that was like mild, but then it kept getting worse and worse. And um, my husband, he had a, what seemed to be a spirit of a woman with long red hair that came to him in his dreams. And he said that she was, you know, attractive, but it was like she was trying to seduce him. And he told me about it. Well, then I, you know, I told him, I'm like, you know, be careful that that could be something, you know, demonic. So, um, finally he started questioning this. I had went on another investigation after he told me this, and it was so odd, but another woman that had just started on my team, uh, I mean, just out of nowhere, she started talking to me while we were at this other investigation and told me that her husband had just started having a redhead female, long red hair, that was coming to him in his dreams. And... I, I didn't mention it to her about what, you know, that that was going on with my husband, but I was so shocked. I, I was like, that's a heck of a coincidence. So when I went home, I told my husband about what, what she had told me. Well, he thought that since the woman had came to our house and, you know, before this, because um, we, I would have people over and we would look at evidence on videos and, and you know, go, we would have... We, what we'd do is we'd have evidence review meetings at my house. I would always like 
you know, we'd cook dishes and we would get together and have a little get togethers and go over our evidence at our previous investigations. So she had already came to our house and he thought that it was a spirit that was, you know, attached to her and she brought it into our home and it now attached to my husband. So it was, so I was thinking, okay, um, you know, it was either that or maybe the spirit from the other guy at the other investigation, maybe it was what was going on in my house and why we were having things happen. You know, it was, it's confusing, but it was just, you know, we didn't know what, why this was happening. Well, finally, once he started figuring out that, wait, you know, this is, this is probably demonic, um, and started questioning it himself. Well, finally, the spirit started getting violent with him. And uh, one night it came to him and it attacked him. Well, when it did, um, he woke up and he grabbed his rosary beads because since all this stuff was going on in my house, I had put rosary beads over all my doors and windows. I put Bibles in all my rooms. I mean, even in the closets. I had Bibles open like that was going to do anything. But I had them all open all through the house and everything. Well, anyway, he had those rosary beads on and he took it off and he started yelling, in the name of Jesus, get out of my house. Well, when he did that, the rosary beads just popped right in midair. And I mean, beads went all over the room and it, it finally stopped, though. It finally did calm down. And after it calmed, you know, he it calmed down and everything started, you know, calmed down that night he noticed that he actually had bite marks in his groin area. And it was like, you know, it was definitely something. It was demonic. And um, it, it just got so bad. Well, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was doing everything I could, everything that I had learned um, in the paranormal community about, you know, getting rid of these spirits. I mean, I did burning sage. I put up the rosary beads. I put Bibles in all my rooms and everything. Well, finally, uh, you know, it had got so bad. Um, one night I had bought an audio book. It was Chip Ingram, Invisible War. And I put it on my, it was on my laptop. And we went to bed at night, and I would let it play. Well, it had prayers on it, it, you know, also. So I would let the prayers play. And what happened was one night we was laying there, and I started, I, you know, was letting it play. And I guess my husband felt this presence come into the room, and he felt it get come next to him on the bed. And right away... The, um, he realized that the prayers were playing on the laptop. So he decided to start saying the prayers as, you know, as the recorder was saying it, the laptop, he figured that he would follow along. And soon as he started praying, our fan that was in my room flew across the room into the wall. And that woke me up. And about that time, he, he started, he grabbed my shoulder and he said, Dana, Dana, shut that off. Whatever it is, it don't like that. And I said, I don't care what it don't like. You know, so, you know, we were both, you know, right now, get out of my house in the name of Jesus. And we would do this. Well, every time we did that, it would stop. But you see, it would always return again, you know, another night. So... But I couldn't figure out why. You know, it just seemed like nothing was working to get rid of it. So finally, um, we were in my living room one day, one night, and my son, my grandson, was in my bedroom on the bed watching TV. Well, he got quiet in there, and I thought, well, I'll check on him. So I looked around the 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 corner into my room, and I seen him sitting up on the bed. And he was looking at the foot of the bed like he was afraid, like he had, it honestly, like he acted like he'd seen a ghost. And I walked in and I said, what's the matter, Pa? And he just looked at me and he, I said, what is it? And he said, I don't know. I seen something. And I said, what was it? And he said, I don't know. He said, maybe a monster or something. And I said, there ain't no such thing as no monster. 
I said, I don't see no monster. Where's the monster at? And he jumped off the bed and he said, I don't know. And he looked around and he put his hand across the floor and he said, I don't know. It went in the floor or something. Well, when he did that, I knew that whatever it was in my house, you know, now was showing itself to him. He was only like three or four. He was really young. And I got so angry about it. And I'm like, you know what? This thing is messing with us, but now it's going to start messing with my grandson. You know, I that was it. I mean, I, I at that point, I was so desperate. I was at my, it was at, it was at the worst right there. And so I finally, I told my, my husband, I said, you know, see, I had started listening to some, uh, some ministers on, on blog talk radio. And I had heard them talking about, you know, they casting out demons and stuff. And when I listened to this stuff, they also talked a lot about God's word and I was hearing it and I started like looking up verses and stuff. So I was getting curious and I was learning more and more. So I thought, you know what? My husband probably has an attachment and we need to take him to, you know, a church and get getting him delivered. So I told him, I told my husband, I said, okay, we're going to go to church this Sunday and we're going to talk to, uh, you know, someone about getting you delivered. So uh, he agreed because, I mean, at that point, like I said, we were so desperate. So finally, we went that Sunday and after church was over, we decided to go to the front and talk to, you know, the minister. Well, we went up there, and it just so happens at that church, you can't talk to the minister, the pre the pastor, after church because he's busy. I mean, they actually have three services back-to-back -back at that church. So um, so uh, what we did was we talked to the uh, assistant pastor. He was also a prayer counselor. So we talked to him, and I told him, I said, I, I said, we've got spirits in my house and they're tormenting us and they're tormenting my husband. And I think he's got an attachment. I said, I did an investigation at this one house and I started telling him about this. And he said, wait a minute, what are you saying? Are you? And I said, well, I'm a, a paranormal investigator. And I think that a spirit, you know, came from another investigation and attached to my husband. He said, oh, honey, you got to stop doing what you're doing. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, that's the occult. He said, that's what's given these spirits legal rights. That's probably why you're having this stuff happen. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. Well, I, I just, before I never would have believed that. But at this point, I was so desperate. And it was almost like God was showing me, you know. It was almost like he was opening my eyes. <laughs> And all of a sudden, it was just like it it really totally just rang truth with me. And I thought, gosh, okay, well, okay, then he's probably right, you know. So he looked over and he noticed that my husband had on a rosary bead necklace. And he asked my husband, he said, why do you have that on? And my husband told him, he said, well, for protection. And I told the, told the, the minister, I told him, I says, well, I said, I have those in my house through all the, on the windows and, you know, over the doors. And I have Bibles in every room. And he says, he told my husband, he said, please take it off. And my husband took it off and he says, okay. And he says, well, just put it in your pocket or something. So my husband put it in his pocket and we asked him why. And he says, well, he says, when you take your faith and you put it in an object, you're taking your faith off Jesus. He said, you need to have faith in Jesus and in Jesus alone. And I don't know what it was, but at that moment, my eyes were open. I finally figured it out, you know, that it, it made sense. You know, it was like, here we were, we were trying, I tried sage, I tried all this other stuff. I tried everything. But nothing else worked. I even tried the name of Jesus, okay? But I was always holding up the rosary beads. I was always, and then I would go right back to the paranormal stuff. You know, um, you can you can yell the name of Jesus all day long, but if you're doing ghost hunts and you're you're dabbling in the occult, you're leaving God's umbrella of protection. You know, those things have 
recompense that come with it, no matter what, you know. You can pray uh, prayers of protection when you go to these ghost hunts and things, but you're not going to be protected. You know, as long as you are doing these things, um, you know, they come with a price. And, and there's no amount of prayer. You can't, you can't take away, uh, you know, um, how do I say this? The bad that comes with it just because you prayed. If you're still going to keep doing it, you know what I mean? God knows your heart. And if you're not willing to give it up and truly repent uh, of it, you know, God, God's not going to, you're still not going to be protected from, from, you know, what it reaps. <laughs> so, um, it, this is just something that I learned and it's from that day forward, my eyes were totally open to the paranormal and to everything that comes with it. And that, you know, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Um, I have a holy hatred for it right now. I finally learned what it was all about and, and I don't want no more part of it. Um, I see what it does to other people. I see people that dabble with it and they have all kind of things happen in their families and in their lives. And they, it's, you know, it's just, there's, and they don't understand that, you know, these things bring curses on us and they also bring curses to your children too, um, up to like the third or fourth generation. So, you know, it, God is so good. <laughs> God is so good. And he took that passion I had for the paranormal out of my heart. Um, even at Halloween time and, and times like that, that used to be my time of year. Okay. But now it's like when I go to an, into a store and see the things up, you know, Halloween stuff and everything, it breaks my heart. I mean, I truly see it for what it is. It's nothing but a representation of death and evil, you know, and it's like the kids don't know that, um, you know, it's just, it's so sad. It really is. But the thing about it is we have to have faith in Jesus and in Jesus alone. And we have to turn our backs against the enemy and against wickedness and sin and turn towards God. You know, we must submit our, submit to God in total submission, not just halfway. We can't give him half of our life and expect total blessings. We have to be able to give it all to him. So I just, I really pray that my testimony helps other people. Um, uh, I, I really, really do. Um, you know, years ago when all this was going on, I listened to other people's testimonies. Uh, Laura Maxwell is one of them. Um, she really, really went through something with it. And, um, she actually ended up losing her mother. Um, but it's a, it's a, quite a powerful testimony. Um, I actually suggest that people listen to it. Um, if they can, I really do. Um, anybody that's in the occult and they're thinking about getting out of it, I suggest you listen to that. Um, just look it up. Look up other testimonies too on the subject. Um, there's power in the testimony, guys. And you know what? To God be all the glory. Um, I praise God every day, um, you know, that I got out of it and that I, you know, I want to help other people. <clears throat> so anyway, God bless you guys and you have a, a good year. All right. Bye-bye.